Hey there guys, how's it going? Back with another video. So, no doubt most of you have probably heard about Josh Taylor's recent decision to leave Cyclone Promotions and sign with Top Rank and ESPN. So yeah, he's going to be promoted by Bob Arum now, he's going to be fighting on ESPN and the likelihood is that because of this move, he's probably going to be fighting in America for the nearby future. So, let's talk about that because this is an, this is an issue that I honestly have mixed feelings on, I really do and... The overwhelming reception, or the, the overwhelming response that I've heard from fans based on this issue is a positive, you know, a positive response. You know, uh, obviously there are some major upsides to this, I'm not going to deny. Signing with top rank is going to obviously be very good for Josh Taylor in terms of making a lot of money very quickly. I'm assuming that top rank offered him a lot of money. I know that when, when Tyson Fury quite recently signed with Top Rank and ESPN, he made a lot of money from it. He made career-high money, and he's going to be making career-high money for the rest of his career based on that. So I'm assuming they were able to acquire Josh Taylor for a reasonable price. And to be honest, leaving Cyclone Promotions didn't surprise me at all. I really wasn't surprised because I think we all knew that was going to happen. I think we all saw it coming. I mean, Cyclone have been falling apart Ever since they lost um, Carl Frampton, you know, they've been in a legal dispute with him, which has harmed them financially. You know, they also were, you know, they lost several of their other fighters. Like they lost, um, you know, the, the McGuigans lost Lee McGregor. They lost that, that woman, Chantel Cameron. Um, you know, they, they lost all their biggest prospects, basically. And not only that, they didn't really have any TV de dates anymore. You know, I don't really think they're showing um, cards on Channel 5 anymore like they were before. So, I don't think that Cyclone were really going anywhere, and I think that we all knew secretly that Taylor was going to leave them. However, I wasn't expecting it to be ESPN in top rank. I thought that he was going to sign with Eddie Hearn and Sky Sports. I thought he was going to be a matchroom fighter, because matchroom have a, a big stable of fighters who could build a, you know, his domestic fan base. Like He could have had fights against the likes of Lewis Ritson, for example, which would have been very good for his market value here in the UK, and he could have been on some big fights on Sky. I mean, his last two fights in the World Boxing Super Series were both on Sky, so I was expecting him to sign with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom, and I think that would have been a, a good move for him here in the UK. However, surprisingly, it ended up being ESPN and Top Rank that acquired him, so like I said, there are upsides to it. He's going to make plenty of money. He is. The other upside to it is it's going to be very easy for them to make the undisputed fight, you know, because Jose Ramirez has the other two titles and Josh Taylor has two titles of his own. So with Ramirez being a top-ranked fighter and having been with top rank for a while now, that will be a very easy fight to make. I mean, that could even be the next fight, you know, if um, if Ramirez gets by Victor Postal, which I expect him to in a, in a difficult fight. I expect him to win, though. And, you know, with Josh Taylor... I would like to see Josh Taylor maybe um, take a tune-up fight first. You know, just um, maybe if, if the fight's going to be in America, they could maybe have um, an, a, a build-up fight for Josh Taylor. Maybe get him on that undercard, you know, just to kind of promote the fight a little bit, make it a bit bigger. But either way, it's it's an easy fight to make. You know, that, that's a very easy fight for top rank. It'll probably be in America. And, yeah, it, it just it, it brings us closer to having an undisputed champion in that division. So that obviously is is a good thing. So those are all positives. At the same time though, at the same time, I have a few reservations about it. I really do. Now I've spoken in the past, and you guys know this if you followed my channel, I've spoken at length in the past about how much I'm strongly against European fighters signing with American promoters and basing their entire career in America. I always think, and in fact, no, I, I don't think, I know, okay, from what I've observed from recent boxing history, it never works out well, okay, when, when a European fighter or a British fighter signs with an American promoter and decides to base themselves in America, it almost always goes wrong, and the reason for that is these American promoters do not have your back. All right, if if you are a European fighter, right, and Josh Taylor's from Scotland, right, so here in the UK, he is not, do, do you really think that Bob Arum is going to prioritise him over some of his ethnic fan bases that he has over in the States? Like, if Josh Taylor's going to fight Jose Ramirez, 
You think that he's going to get a fair shake in that fight? You think he's going to get a fair crack of the whip in that, in that fight? Even though he's signed with Bob Arum, I don't think so. Because, I mean, we've seen it with Lomachenko, for example. I mean, Lomachenko got absolutely robbed after signing with top rank. You know, they set him to, you know, they set him up to lose against a Mexican, didn't they? In that guy's hometown. So, if that were to happen, I mean, I could, I could see... Imagine Josh Taylor fights Jose Ramirez, right? Imagine they put the fight in Texas. And imagine if they have Lawrence Cole as the referee. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> so, I, I think you guys know where I'm going with this, don't you? So, I, I really have reservations about this. I don't think it's a good idea. I really don't think it's a good idea for a European fighter to sign with American promoters and base their career in America. Yes, they'll make money. But if you're looking for longevity in your career... You're not going to get it. You'll end up with the same situation you have with Sergei Kovalev, where they basically set him up and ruined his career. All right. And, you know, you have the same situation they have with Triple G, where he should be undefeated. But they robbed him twice because they had an, an ethnic fan base that they wanted to cater to. And of course, that's Canelo and his Mexican public. You know, they, they it, it doesn't matter if you're a European fighter, you can be the best fighter in the world. They, they'll eventually take it off you. you no, know, they will use you and your titles in order to build up somebody else. And I could see Bob Arum using Josh Taylor to build up some of his other fighters, like said Ramirez. Um, maybe Josh Taylor could get a Lomachenko fight. That is a fight I've talked about in the past that I'd like to see. You know, if um, if Lomachenko gets by Teofimo Lopez, which, you know, they're talking about that fight next, that's another one that I'd like to talk about at some point if, if it gets made. So, yeah. If he gets by him and becomes undisputed, I think it's pretty inevitable that, that Lomachenko is going to move up again. Because Lomachenko seems to be on an absolute mission to prove he's like the greatest fighter of all time or something. And I wouldn't be surprised if he moved up to challenge Josh Taylor. And with him being with top rank, that would actually be a, an easy fight to make as well. You know, Josh Taylor against um, Lomachenko. I'd like to see that fight. I think that'd be a great fight. I really do. And obviously... Um, I would favour Lomachenko, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, Josh Taylor would definitely have size advantage, uh, physically stronger, probably, you know, better chin, tougher, probably hits harder, um, he, he would have a good chance against Lomachenko, but I would still favour Lomachenko to win the fight on points, because I do think Lomachenko is that good, but, anyway, um, as for signing with top rank with Josh Taylor, I, I kind of wish he didn't, I, because, I, again, from my own selfish point of view, when I just think about me as a boxing fan, I, I would like to go and see some of Josh Taylor's fights live. I was hoping he would have some more fights in Glasgow and whatnot, so I could go see them. I was hoping he would maybe have some big domestic fights, you know, like fight the likes of R Lewis Ritson over here and stuff like that. You know, I, I was really looking forward to seeing those type of fights, even if he were to, even if it wasn't matchroom, like even if he signed with Frank Warren, you know, Frank Warren has some light welterweights of his own, doesn't he? I mean, Frank Warren promotes... Um, you know, he promotes Jack Catterall, who's another undefeated um, British champion from, from the UK who's world-ranked. You know, that would have been a great fight in both both Southpaws, both undefeated. That would have been awesome. But sadly, we're probably never going to get to see those fights because for the next few years of Josh Taylor's career, he's going to be in America fighting Mexicans and, and you know, pe people on Bob Arum undercards until he gets a big fight and probably gets robbed. That's probably what's going to happen, sadly. So... I, I'm I'm disappointed. I, I kind of wish this didn't happen. I understand that in boxing, and, and I like the quote that Shane McGuigan came up with. You know, he said, if you want loyalty, get a dog. He's absolutely right. In boxing, there's no loyalty. And, and I can't really criticize Josh Taylor for not being loyal because obviously he's got to, you know, he's got to do what he thinks is right for his career. You know, it's his money and his future for his family and his friends and whatnot that he's trying to secure. And Obviously, he's going to try and secure as much money as possible because you never know. You could get knocked out and your career could be over and you can never make any money again. You could get injured or you could get sidetracked and, you know, stuff could happen that could derail your career and your earning potential. So I don't blame Josh Taylor for trying to make as much money as possible. I don't blame him for trying to get an undisputed fight as quick as possible. I just wish that he'd been a little bit more tactful about it. I think it would have made so much more sense to sign with Matt Drew, you know, and sign with Eddie Hearn. That, that would have made so much more sense for his career. He would have been protected politically. He would have been able to fight at home in his hometown 
in front of his home fans where he can grow his fan base. That brings me to my next point. He's never going to grow a fan base in America. All right. What happens when his contract with top rank expires and he's in the exact same place now? Or, or he's in the exact same place in a couple of years as he is now, except he has no title and a couple of losses? You know, what? what's he going to do then? You know, his market value could have been so much better if he'd have just signed with Matchroom and continued to fight in the UK, you know, continued to fight in Scotland, built up, you know, the domestic scene over here, built up his name over here. He could become a stadium fighter. OK, look at look at Ricky Hatton and all the success he had fighting in the UK, you know, filling up big arenas. Look at the success that David Hay had fighting over here. You know, he didn't need to go to America. He didn't need to fight in America, did he? He, he was perfectly fine fighting over here. All right. Look at, you know, the, the crowds Tony Bellew was able to generate. Look at the crowds Anthony Joshua is able to generate. You don't need to go to America to be a star. You don't need to go to America to make a lot of money. And I can guarantee you Josh Taylor is never going to become a household name fighting in America. That's never going to happen, guys. Okay, he's never going to become, you know, a big um, pay-per-view star over there. That ain't happening, all right? It ain't happening. I'm sorry, okay? So I, I don't like this move. Even though I understand it, I, I get why he's moved with top rank. Um, I just don't like it. I personally think it was a potential mistake on his part. Um, I, I think that by signing with... Bob Arum, he, he's maybe been kind of inspired by um, things that have gone on in recent history, like like maybe Tyson Fury I mentioned earlier, he, he signed with top rank and, you know, he's been able to make a lot of money, but, you know, there's a difference there, and the difference there is that Tyson Fury is a heavyweight, okay, and you know how it is in heavyweight, particularly in America, okay, the heavyweight division is seen as, you know, the glamour division of boxing, the heavyweight division is seen as the division that comes before all the other divisions, because let's be real, there's the heavyweight champion, and then there's everyone else. When you get a light welterweight fighter, you know, trying to market themselves over there, the market is completely saturated. I mean, who do they have over in America? They have Deontay Wilder at heavyweight, and that's it. So Tyson Fury was able to be that rival. In, you know, the lower divisions in America, the market is just so saturated. There's so many big names. Like I mentioned, you've got the likes of Lomachenko and... You know, he's fighting Teofimo Lopez. You've got other fighters in and around about that division. So, you know, you've got Pacquiao and whatnot and Terence Crawford. I mean, unless, unless Josh Taylor thinks that Bob Arum is going to risk putting him in with Terence Crawford anytime soon, which I don't think Bob Arum will do because Bob Arum seems to be very selective and careful about who he matches Terence Crawford with. I can't see them making that fight personally. So, I don't know what, what Josh Taylor was thinking. Maybe he was thinking he could get a Pacquiao fight at some point, which would obviously be, you know, potentially a big pay-per-view fight, you know, in America. It wouldn't wouldn't be on top rank, obviously, because Pacquiao's with PBC. But I'm, I'm just trying to think of anything else that could come out of this, any good. I mean, obviously, like, like I've mentioned, that there's there's the potential of an undisputed fight. No doubt about it. I totally would, would be down for that. I hope that fight happens, you know. Look... Josh Taylor against Ramirez would be one of the biggest fights, I would have to say, you know, it, for me at least, it would be one of the most anticipated fights. Like, say, my last last year, my last most anticipated fight was Taylor against Progre. I was so happy to see that fight, man, and I think Taylor against Ramirez would definitely really get me excited, you know, because I've not been that excited about boxing in recent years. You know, I'm excited about the upcoming Wilder Fury fight, but for my own reasons, but... I'm I'm I'd be really excited about the prospect of you know Taylor fighting for undisputed, but it concerns me that it's going to be in America with how shady things are over there, and I I just don't trust the whole setup that they have over there, especially with Top Rank. You know Top Rank has a long history of setting up their own fighters. I mean let let's just be honest. I mean look what happened to Manny Pacquiao under Top Rank. I mean Bob Arum and Top Rank. Um, basically set him up to lose when he fought Timothy Bradley the first time, and they robbed him. They did the same thing with Jeff Horn, you remember that? Absolutely robbed him on a top-ranked card in Australia. And, um, yeah, they, they didn't make sure that the, 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 the house fight of Pacquiao was respected. They just straight-up used him to build up another guy. So I don't really think that this is a great move from Josh Taylor. But like, like I said earlier, I don't want to keep rambling, but I, I do understand it. I understand he's going to make plenty of money. Um, you know, I understand that 
it's a it's a move that he's that he's taken so that he can secure his family's future financially. You know, he can make plenty of money and he can he can live the rest of his life comfortably after this without worrying about bills and whatnot because he's not a millionaire. Uh, so I, I don't blame him for taking this kind of money to, you know, continue his career and, and do what he thinks is best for him. As for how it will affect him in terms of his training and stuff like that, I'm assuming he's no longer going to be training with um, Shane McGuigan, which is really disappointing. Um, that's really sad because Shane McGuigan was a great trainer and I think him and Josh Taylor seem to have a great chemistry there, you know, a great relationship, a great fighter-trainer relationship, and it's just really sad that that's not going to be a thing anymore, um, and he's no longer going to have a promoter, like, because at least with Cyclone, he had a promoter who cared about him, he had a promoter who genuinely saw him as, as family, and looked after him, and wanted to continue his career, and wanted to keep him winning, basically, whereas if he's going to be with top rank, he's not going to get that He's probably going to get some American trainer like a Freddie Roach and whatnot who's going to see him as sort of like a just a side project while they focus on their main fighter. Whereas when he was with Shane McGuigan, you know, he was very much Shane McGuigan's top fighter. You know, him and Luke Campbell and whatnot. And Shane McGuigan did a great job with Josh Taylor, I think. And it's just a real shame. And I'm kind of kind of sad that that isn't going to be a thing anymore. So, yeah, that that's pretty much my thoughts on it. Um, as for... I don't know, like, I'm, I'm trying to decide whether the pros here outweigh the cons or whether the cons outweigh the pros, because I'm not 100% sure, if I'm being honest. Um, I, I just think that it's a move that could either go one way or the other. It could be fantastic for his career, you know. He could end up as undisputed champion this time next year. Um, you know, he could get a Pacquiao fight, a Lomachenko fight, a Terence Crawford fight, you know, um... If he could fight guys like Kavalauskas and Jeff Horn and some of these other guys. You know, he could get some big fights, you know, under his belt and make a lot of money and, and make a big legacy for himself. And he could maybe come home as an undisputed champion. But I'm a cynical person by my very nature. I don't think that's going to happen, if I'm being honest. I think he's going to probably get set up. He's probably going to lose controversially. And I just think that if he'd have been a little bit more tactful about the way he signed with a new promoter I think it would have made a lot more sense to sign with a British promoter even if he were to sign with Frank Warren that would have made more sense to me because at least then he'd be fighting in the UK and um, you know fighting signing with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom would have been the perfect idea for him in my opinion even though I'm not really a big fan of Matchroom they do look after their fighters that's one thing I will say is that they do look after their fighters and you know Eddie Hearn would have been looking to have another big name in Scotland, because obviously, you know, Ricky Burns is on his way out, so Eddie Hearn would have liked to have had some big fights over here with, with Josh Taylor, but it's just a shame that that's not going to happen, so that's pretty much all I've got to say, I don't really know how else to put it, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, God bless.